Hey, thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Solomon SK for Coffee and RPGs, where I cover the latest news, trends, and updates for the MMO and RPG gaming genre. With that being said, if you guys got your coffee ready or beverage of choice, of course, let's go over those updates together. Cheers to you guys. And let's go ahead and get started, and we'll first cover some of the articles from MassiveTheOP.com. And the first one here, this week's Black Desert update is cursed literally as a Netflix collab begins. I'm not going to go into too much detail with this particular news article just because I did a video earlier discussing the patch notes and today's updates in Black Desert Online. So I'll have a link or card rather playing at the top right hand corner of this video if you want to take a look at everything new that's going on with Black Desert Online this week. And in their next article, Warhammer Online Rogue Server Return of Reckoning is getting Twitch drops. No kidding. And of course, this is very unusual because we all know that Rogue servers are ran by individuals who actually do not own the IP to the game that they are running. Hey, it seems to be popular enough to get this feature, but it does go on to read that enabling Twitch drops is a new milestone for us. It does not help with the servers in any financial way to clear that out as the devs explain. And if I remember correctly, I believe the Warhammer Online IP actually belongs to EA. So even though technically, I guess by law, what they're doing is illegal, I figured at the end of the day, whoever does own this IP is probably saying what's the harm. <laughs> at least that's what I assume. And in their next article, Heroes in Villains promises unique narrative features and gameplay that doesn't revolve around combat. And I will admit, this actually does pique my interest. And it goes on to read that posts from February to current involve a number of thoughts on how the developing title will approach narrative matters differently than other MMOs, including making player choices meaningful and permanent, as well as avoiding pointless side quests. There are also a number of posts talking about the problem of power standardization and several more posts about using powers outside of combat. And if they are actually able to pull this off, this would actually give the definition of RPG its full meaning. More often than not, it's always about who you could defeat, who you could kill in order to gain or make progress and level up and whatnot. I think that's why you see a lot of videos out there where people try to complete the Fallout series without killing a single thing and it gets very harder and more difficult to do as more Fallout games are released. I believe at least in 3 you could actually talk your way out of certain situations and still complete the game without killing anything. And quite frankly, I hope this is a direction that a lot of other companies do in terms of making their RPGs as well. Next we have a few articles from MMORPG.com. Reza's annual Lol Lolnot Festival, I do apologize for mispronouncing that, returns to Star Trek Online on August 4th. Activities from the previous years will be available for you to partake, including the Power Board Racers, Bithalon, Hargur. Man, I am so sorry I cannot pronounce these things, but if you're a Star Trek Online fan, I'm pretty sure you already know what I'm talking about. New to this year's festivities is the fact that you can take part in any of these events with progress you gain towards. I believe that's what this uh, the sentence is trying to say. Uh, the progress you gain towards the Ryzean weather control vessel. And in their next article, Elder Scrolls Online performance updates and AoE tests coming to Cyrodiil. Zenimax Online Services creative director Rich Lambert has addressed some changes that they will be testing in hopes to optimize your PvP experience. The post gets quite in-depth about how the system currently handles the ability usage and how AoE abilities factor into that. Luckily, ZOS is on the case as they are pointing to Update 27's release as fixing the core problem relating to performance problems on the AoE spectrum. To do this, they have planned some test and release details regarding those tests as follows. And as you can see here, the test will be ran in different phases with tests 1 through 4. I'm not going to go through every single little point just because it sounds incredibly boring <laughs> to be honest with you. But lastly, it does say during the times that the tests are active, ZOS has opt to reward players with double alliance points. Update 27 is set to release on August 24th for the PC. Next, here's what's planned for the future of Neverwinter content. The team touches on Blood War, specifically mentioning that Blood War will change from a platform-wide to an instance-based mechanic. This will now be similar to Heroic Encounters. Additionally, the meter max time to completion will be reduced. The team is also working to fix a bug, preventing Garrick's Mog from spawning correctly. 
Finally, waypoint volume will be adjusted. As for when these changes go live, we don't have a date yet, but the team says these changes will arrive up very soon. And for their last article for the day, ARK provides update on Genesis Part 2, upcoming balance pass, and more. The date for Genesis Part 2 is now March 2021 on all platforms. Consoles are also receiving the Crystal Isle DLC during the final week of August 2020. Additionally, the Tender Love and Care Pass 3 will provide an overhaul on two classic creatures in addition to models, animation, visuals, and more. The team also provided extensive details on a balance pass this Thursday, July 30th. The balance pass will touch on creatures, breeding, and more general balance tweaks including flying creatures will prioritize picking up friendly creatures rather than dismounting friendly riders. Tech Helm will now provide players with gas mask bonuses protecting them from the poison wyvern. And Tech Turrets now require double the amount of shards per bullet, just to name a few. Next, we head on over to GameRant.com for one article. A tweet from Ori and the Blind Forest developers Moon Studios has confirmed that its next game will be an action RPG. The tweet also announces that the new title from the Ori developers will be published by Private Division, the US based publisher most famous for Kerbal Space Program and the Outer Worlds. Next, we got two articles from Gamatsu.com, and the first one here. Altir Ryza 2 Lost Legends and the Secret Fairy teaser trailer. First details and screenshots. And people have been memeing this pretty uh, hilariously. But it does go on to read that publisher Koi Temko and developer Gust have revealed the teaser trailer and the first details and screenshots for its newly announced alchemy RPG sequel, Altir Ryza 2 Lost Legends and the Secret Fairy, which is due out for the PlayStation 4, Switch, and PC via Steam this winter worldwide. So from their official website, they actually gave us tons of new information about what this game is about. Although there are certain, I guess you could say, details about the main character that a lot of people are taking notice. So as you can see, you can scroll down, scroll down, read more about it, and then when you get to the comment section, that's when the real memes begin. For example, those thighs will pierce the heavens, and that's probably the most family-friendly way I could put <laughs> some of the things that's going on within the uh, comment section, but uh, yeah, moving on. <laughs> and in their next and last article of the day, publisher Koi Temko and developer Team Ninja debut gameplay footage of the July 30th due Neo 2 downloadable content, the Tengu's Disciple, during a pre-launch live stream. It is of my opinion that this game doesn't receive as much love as it once did, considering we now have Sekiro that came out, I believe, a few months ago, but now we also have Ghost of Tsushima that came out last week, and people kind of forgot about this one in my opinion. So next we'll go ahead and take a look at some of the articles from altchart.com. First one here, Horizon Zero Dawn gets PC hardware specs. Guerrilla Games are drawing closer to the launch of Horizon Zero Dawn on PC, which will launch on August 7th of 2020. And the recommended configuration or specs will be an i7 or a Ryzen 5 running at 3.5 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a GTX 1060 at 60 gigabytes of memory or an AMD Radeon RX 580 at 8 gigabytes of memory. Next, you can explore the ocean in Cyberpunk 2077, but don't expect water exploration in the game. And I do apologize, it is cut off on the right there if you're watching this on YouTube. But it does go on to read that players will be able to swim, dive, and explore the water in Cyberpunk 2077. And there is some content based in the water, but don't expect a water exploration game. Senior level designer Miles Toast confirmed in a latest podcast. He says, we have swimming mostly because we want to give you the freedom to explore. So yeah, you can swim and dive. I do apologize, I lied to you. There's actually three articles from Altchar, not two. <laughs> But the last one here being a new GTA Online heist reportedly takes place in Liberty City with Nico Bellic returning. It reads on, a leaker who accurately revealed details about the upcoming GTA Online update has shared a couple of new details about the new heist. Apparently, it is set in Liberty City and will feature Nico Bellic and his cousin Roman. Furthermore, the leaker states that all future GTA Online updates will be based on Liberty City, so expect to see a lot of the events and activities in the New York-inspired location. But again, also, this is a leak, so take everything with a grain of salt. 
And that concludes today's episode of MMO and RPG News Roundup. I do appreciate it if you made it with me so far because the watch time does help with the algorithms. I really hope I earned your subscription in today's episode. If so, please consider hitting the subscribe button as well as the bell notification icon right next to it. But anyways, everyone, I will finally let you guys go. Hope you guys have a blessed night and I will see you guys next time. Cheers again, everyone.